John. Elohim is actually a term that you don't know how to translate. For this reason, it is translated in many ways. For example, it is translated with the term God, but the Jewish exegete themselves say that in the Hebrew language there is no term that indicates God as we understand it. As an, an omniscient, omnipotent, transcendent spiritual entity that is to be worshipped. Elohim is also translated as judges, legislators, governors, the bright ones from above and so on. All of these terms that are used actually indicate the functions that uh, this Elohim performed, but do not say who they really were. The Elohim were certainly judges, they were certainly legislators, they were certainly governors, but who they really were and what the term Elohim really means, we don't know. This is the fundamental thing. Since we don't know, we must have the correctness to say it. Here in Genesis 20, 13, we see one of the examples relating to those uncertainties I mentioned earlier that concerns the term Elohim and the verbs that are used. This is the passage where Abraham tells his story and tells when the Elohim brought me out of my father's house. Then you see that here the verb is translated in the plural form. This is the Bible translated for scholars who know the Hebrew language. This is the guide of the verbal forms present in the Old Testament and also here it is said that the verb it is in the plural form in the third person. So, it is certain that the verb connected to the term Elohim is plural. But in the Bibles translated for families, the verb is theologically translated into the singular because the term Elohim must indicate God and so it must have the verb in the singular even if it is plural in Hebrew. As you can see, the Bibles translated for scholars respect the letter of the Hebrew text, while the Bibles translated for families contain theological translations, that is, they must convey an idea, a different concept from what is written in the original Bible.